Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe, and I hope everybody's staying healthy. We're all kind of tied together in this strange, this ultra strange timeline, but the world seems to be normalizing somewhat, so definitely happy to see that. So on to the video. Here we go. I wanted to do a quick video. We're talking AMD Ryzen 3000 series, uh, some of their improvements, some of their benchmarks, um, some of the potential that we're looking at moving into Ryzen 4000 by the end of this year. I uh, just wanted to demonstrate an EDC bug. It's a PBO. It's an EDC PBO bug. So it actually, uh, you're able to uh, uh, mess with the settings a little bit and get your CPU, or at least I'm able to get my CPU to boost uh, about 125 megahertz over what it was boosting on regular PBO. So it's pretty, pretty interesting, pretty interesting demonstration. I uh, just wanted to show everyone what these uh, Ryzen 3000 CPUs can do and then what to kind of ex expect moving forward. So let's go ahead and get our bearings here. So it's the same, uh, same idea or same setup as it's been lately. Uh, we're going with the Ryzen 7 3800X. It's, it's uh, all core clocked at 4 or 5 gigahertz, 1.356 volts. Uh, we're on a X470 Crosshair 7 Hero board. And uh, we have uh, two uh, eight, eight gig sticks of uh, DDR4 RAM, and it is a Team Group Extreme kit, and it's uh, 4133 and a C18, so it's an excellent kit, probably my best kit at B-Dye. So you can see my uh, my timings, I was able to tighten them up a little bit. I dropped TRCD down to 13 and uh, TRP down to 13 as well. So looking really good, looking really good there. Extremely happy with how the setup's been going. So let's go ahead and let me just drop this here for you. I wanted to do a little teaser here. So this is a, a little screen cap I, I, I grabbed here. And this was my EDC bug that I was enabling. And I'll show you how to enable it here just in a minute. But you can see I'm getting my 3800X to boost to 4, 7 gigahertz on multiple cores. Um, you can see I've got a, a really good CCD and I've got two really good CCXs that uh, are symmetrical. So it's kind of neat. You can see I'm boosting here. Um, I run this little program. It's called Boot Tester. You can f or Boost Tester. You can find it on the internet. I found it on GitHub. So pretty interesting. But it just puts a little four second load onto your uh, onto your uh, uh, CPU there, and then each core will boost to its uh, maximum potential. So I just wanted to demonstrate that and give everybody an idea that we can of uh, of some of the potential that Ryzen has and what we're going to see in the future, hopefully. So, anyways, let's move forward here, and let's. Uh, why don't I just uh, go ahead and show you that EDC bug because I, I think people are really going to like this one. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get this party started here. Right here, we're going to just go ahead and boot into the BIOS here. We're on the main page here. Let's go to the Extreme Tweaker tab and let's just go ahead and change that CPU core ratio to auto. And then we're going to change the core performance here. We're going to go ahead and set that to enabled. So that's going to select your, your uh, frequencies, your highest frequencies you want. Then let's go over, let's go to PBO, so Provision Boost. Precision boost, go to manual, let's go PPT limit, let's set that to 300, let's go TDC limit, set that to 300, and let's go EDC, go ahead and drop a 10 in there. Uh, precision boost overdrive scaler, I've just been using 10X, um, you can try auto, see what that does, and I've been throwing 200 megahertz here. Um, you can try auto on that as well, so let's go ahead and back out here, and let's go ahead and check out the, uh, the voltage here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and go with an offset, Let's go offset. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a positive 25 millivolt offset, which it's, it's not a high offset, but with this PBO bug, you're, you are uh, shoving quite a bit of voltage in there with that plus 25, but this is the lowest offset that I can go that uh, enables that 4.7. So you can see my load line calibration level three. Um, you can see it's all level three. So this is your V droop. You can see my boot ramp or my, my boot voltage for my RAM, but there's my V droop. I'm drooping somewhere around 20 millivolts when I'm under full load. And then here's my RAM timing is there. Pretty happy with these, 14, 13, 13, 26, 39. You can see that. So not bad, TRFC is pretty good there, 238. So if you ever have problems posting, maybe mess with that TRFC, loosen that up a little bit, uh, loosen up the TRCD a little bit. But there you go, there's the settings, there's the setup. We're just gonna go ahead and back out and we're gonna go ahead and F10. And why not just post? So let's say we, we just posted and let's, uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you the boost testing in progress. So it's pretty neat actually. So here we go. So let's go ahead and open up boost, boost tester here. And like I said, it, it throws a little uh, four second load onto each core and you can see it boosting up to, their, to its potential. 
Now, when I game, this will boost me up to about four six. So I want you know I can't boost me to four seven when I'm gaming, but it just shows you a little bit of potential. This is for demonstration purposes. Voltages are very high. Um, I wouldn't run this uh, daily like this, but if you wanted to, I, I think you could run this EDC bug if you found out your fit limit on your voltage under under load, and then you were able to offset the voltage and droop down to that uh, fit limit. But like I said, you'd have to find out your uh, you'd have to figure out your fit limit and. So you can see it going here, it's pretty impressive. Um, we're, we're blowing out 4.6 there, the next core will hit 4.7. Just really impressive, uh, it just kind of uh, uh, demonstrates some of the potential that we're looking forward to the next uh, Ryzen series. Pretty neat though, pretty neat though. So there's a little demonstration for you. You can see, maybe you can enact that EDC bug if you'd like, and then like I said, I would lower the voltage. I'd figure out an offset that worked and then a V-droop, uh, a load line calibration that worked there as well so let's just go ahead here um you know i wanted to give a quick shout out here because i you know um what one of my main inspirations for my channel and for the information that i'm providing is a channel called actually hardcore overclocking the guy calls himself buildzoid so i would definitely go to his channel like subscribe buy his teespring um he gives some of the best information out there he's one of the only people that's providing this type of information um, the voltage regulation, PCB breakdowns on uh, on uh, on um, GPUs, on motherboards, uh, RAM overclocking. He's doing Intel. He's doing AMD. So he's got some really really excellent information. I've learned a lot from him. He's a great in inspiration to me. And I wanted to throw one more shout out there. There's a, there's a new kind of up and coming uh, a YouTuber. His name is Graphically Challenged. He kind of found his niche. I think talking about Ryzen voltages and uh, getting a lot of good information from actually hardcore overclocking. I believe he is. So. I, I think that he's a really up and coming uh, YouTuber. So a big shout out to Graphically Challenge. Like, subscribe, uh, check his channel out. So, so this is the setup here. So, so here's what we're looking at. So this is Ryzen 3000. This represents the CPU here. Um, we've got the IO die with the UMC, the Universal Memory Controller, which is going to be here. This is a 12 nanometer die here. And if we look over here, we've got this CCD, which which encap encapsulates uh, two CCXs. So the CCD is a core chiplet die here, which encapsulates two CCXs, which is a core complex die. So in this topology here, we've got two CCDs four CCXs, each CCX houses four cores. It can be three, but let's just go ahead and with four cores. So the so core to core communication uh, is is there's it's unable to communicate core to core. So is what happened what has to happen if you want to communicate from core to core is you have to use what's called this infinity fabric, this FCLK clock here to go to core to core. So this is what you can uh, overclock and it'll create lower latency, uh, faster response times from core to core or a CCD to a UMC. And so if you look on the other side, so we've got the UMC here and then we have the infinity fabric that runs out the, the dual channel setup there to the four dims. So you can overclock this infinity fabric here. You can overclock the infinity fabric here and you can really start seeing a massive uh, performance games in regards to PCs. And so, and so in the past, RAM overclocking hasn't affected performance quite like it does now. And that's one of the main reasons why is because we're overclocking Infinity Fabric from, from, uh, from the IO die. So from the UMC to the CCD and then from the UMC to the DIMM. So this is affecting performance greatly. Uh, well, at, like RAM overclocking has never affected before. So that's one of the things that's really exciting about the new series, the new uh, the new Ryzen series, is that they're improving their RAM overclocking to the to the point that it really makes a difference. Now you can start really making a difference. So I just wanted I did this demonstration here. Just wanted to go over this real quick. And so what this is from right to left is I did uh, I, I did test with 3200 megahertz, uh, 3600 megahertz, and 3800 megahertz uh, on the RAM. And I, you know, I have my uh, my ratios in one to one to one. So and they're all the, the same board, same CPU, same timing, same voltage, same everything. And you can see the throughput differences and the latency differences. And so I found this pretty pretty interesting. So if we're looking at 3600 megahertz uh, DRAM kit, is roughly uh, six percent faster than the 3200. And then the 3800 kit is roughly 11 and percent faster than the 3200 kit. So then if you're just looking at sheer throughput, the 3600 kit is roughly 12% more throughput than the 3200 kit. And the 3800 kit is roughly 19% more throughput than the 3200 kit. So it's pretty interesting. You tighten those timings, uh, you get yourself a good set of B-Die and you can really make performance games by just 
RAM overclocking. This is one of the most exciting things I'm seeing right now with regards to Ryzen is the ability to overclock your RAM and get actual performance gains. So let's go ahead and just throw a, a couple benchmarks out there, let you guys see a couple of my benchmarks that I've been able to get. Um, I, I've... I, I'm someone that I, I purchased a lot of, uh, well, I purchased computer parts, test them. I'm really enjoying this. It's kind of my hobby right now. So I bought a couple 3600 X's as well. Um, here's one boost clock I had. I was hitting 4475. So the boosting wasn't quite as high, but one of my 3600 X's has a really, really good memory controller. So that, that uh, here, let's check this out. So that Silicon Lottery is for real it's for real so we're looking at this is one of my 3600 x's you can see the timings i could put on this um it ran excellent you can see the timings no errors it's hci tested so no errors it looks great but this is one of my 3600 x's another one of my 3600 x's could only do 37 33 14 14 so that umc is definitely different than the other umc so here let's just throw this out here so you can see some of my numbers here that i have uh, with my 3800X, same timings, they look great. Throughput's good, latency looks excellent. And then, uh, oh, I just wanna throw this one out here. I just got an Asus Strix 5700XT. I think I got a really good card. Um, I can push it over 22 gigahertz. Um, 1.187 volt, which is a little high, but I, I've been running this thing a little bit lower, a little bit lower voltage, but I've been really impressed with it. And then, so uh, let's go ahead and throw out here, I've got a, Cinebench 20, and this is, a, this is at 4525, so all core. So you can see the number there, 5543, not bad. And then you can see, I believe this is my highest score that I put out there. It's at, at 455, all core. I think it's at 14 volt, and it was 5582. So I was really impressed with that one. That was, that was, a, that was a nice run there. So, and then I showed everybody earlier, there's the boost at 47. There's one of my other 3600Xs. So one of my 3600Xs has a better all core setup so it can clock higher, but the UMC doesn't work nearly as well. So like I keep saying, Silicon Lottery is real. So there's a single uh, a single core, 530 score, not bad, my 3800X. And then uh, there's my single cores right there on my CPU Z, 569, not bad. And then uh, let's go ahead and just throw out my Fire Strike score there. You can see I'm, I'm scoring over 30,000 now with my new 5700 XT. Been pretty happy with that. Um, you can just want to show you my time spy. I, I, it, it, did, it did spike up to 4.7, which I was impressed with, but that's my time spy there. And then just one more there. I think that was my highest CPU score I got so far with my 3800X, so I'm just under 12, so not too bad, not too bad, but... Anyways, just wanted to show some information. Just want to show some of my uh, settings, uh, some of the performance that I've been able to acquire or achieve with these Ryzen 3000s. I've been so impressed. I'm so happy with this. Um, I've got a couple uh, new components coming. I've got a 3900X. I'm going to be testing with that. I've got an X570 Crosshair 8 coming, so we're going to be testing with that. So we're going to see differences. I've got a nice set of uh, G-Skill Neo, um, a 32 gig kit. It's a 3600 megahertz C1616 kit that I'm going to be testing soon as well. I'm going to test that on my 3800X. I'm going to test it on the 3900X as well. I'm going to test it on multiple boards. I'm going to test it on a X470 board and X570 board. So we're going to see what differences that we're going to come out with and all this. So We've got some uh, we've got some videos to film in the future. Um, there's so much information here. I'm sure I missed a bunch of this. Um, it's just so much. I'm just trying to keep this down a little bit. So I appreciate everybody's time, their attention. If you've got any questions, feel free to put them down there in the comments. And if you would, if you like the information, please like, subscribe, and thank you much. So I just wanted to say have a great day and later.